music producer. The studio is usually a home away from home. And incidentally, it literally is the home of producer Vikas Kohli, who enjoys nothing more than making good sounding records. Known for his multi-genre repertoire and expertise in song composition, Coley's producing philosophy is very simple. He says if you want to record something relevant, then you have to be ahead of the curve. I really love sort of jumping from all these genres and picking up what I can. And I learn so much from the artist. And then when I move on to the next project, I bring that to the next artist project. So basically, whoever comes next benefits from everything that happened in the studio, whatever it was. Well, it in seems all to history. be like there's a lot of fusion. I mean, we're seeing it with right. clothing and food and now in music. Uh, how important is that when you're creating stuff and producing uh, pieces? You know, for me, it's the most important thing because why would you do what's already on the radio? Like, you know, you. I've already got, you know, for instance, uh, I've got a Led Zeppelin album. Uh, I don't want to make another Led Zeppelin album. Or if you've got a Puff Daddy album, why are you going to make that again? Bring something new to the table. And one way to do that is obviously crossing genres. Um, and, and, you know, some people do it by going back in time, bring stuff from the 50s back, or, you know, go across. Like um, a, a ska band can go and get someone to do some reggae on top, and that's like a perfect blend because the <laughs> two are so close anyway. And with a secure deal to produce for one of Bollywood's leading Bhangra artists, Mika Singh's fifth album, it's no wonder that Kohli has a unique musical flavor to offer artists. Most people listen to albums, I listen to sounds, it's kind of strange. No, it's good because some people have preferences to different music and they can't listen to anything. You know, mm. a lot of people who like hip-hop don't like country, but the fact that you're able right. to fuse it together is such a talent and that's probably hip -hop coming out through. hip country. <laughs> you want to do this album? We should do Okay, got it. I would say viewer discretion is the advise not because of the content but probably because of the well, musical sound I'm a beginner but yeah, maybe we, we got tricks here in the studio Don't worry. I'm gonna find out about that later. <laughs> and I did find out about the music tricks and I got a hands-on lesson from the expert Koli on the process of music producing so because my voice is projected through here and what happens to it you're working on the mixing board right now right well uh, the mic hears whatever it is you do and it then converts it to a signal, electrical signal, it gets converted into digital data and ends up on my hard drive and then the software that I use I can then manipulate the sound or just play it back and, and then combine it with you know the guitar, the drums, every other instrument and make a song. Coley adds that sound is nothing but air moving back and forth. This means what makes one song different from another song is the way the air is actually moving. So let's find out what else can be done with the song. We're at a mixing board and yep. you're showing me what? I'm showing you you can change the levels really? of the sound. Okay. So you can pull that fader down right there. Oh, wow. And so now he's gone out of the mix. Oh, wow. And then I can... Yeah, so nothing's on that track, but here you can solo Mika if you want. If you think you want to hear more Mika, you can unsolo that and pull his fader up right there. Now he's getting louder. And there's just the music. That's really cool. So there's so many options in terms of sound and, and mixing the music and different beats. That's what you were talking yeah. about before. Anything you want to do, it can be done. Anything. Wow. And to add to the 70s inspired lighting and furniture in the studio, there's a nifty little drum booth with a nice big glass door that allows bands to record live off the floor and remain in full visual contact with each other. And let's not forget, the guitars. You need to put one of your fingers down there. Like this? Uh, the other way around, like yeah. That? Okay. And one more finger right there. Okay. Hold that down nice and tight. Yep. And now strum across all the strings. Oh. Keith Richards couldn't have done Very it better. Nice. Oh, for my first time. Yep. <laughs> So with bands like The Responsibles, the material comes to Coley pre-written and constructed, and he steps in to give them an outside perspective on their songs. And for rock artists like Zamir, Coley rearranges the parts, tweaks the lyrics, and sets a creative direction for the album. And with solo artists and songwriters like Sandra and Priya, Coley writes the songs with them. He arranges the instruments, parts, and calls in an A-list musician to record the parts. Ultimately, Coley and the artist work together to create the unique sound. 
At the moment, Coley's ultimate goal is to find and work with unknown up-and-coming artists so that he can help them become A-list artists and get them signed to a label deal. And while music is Coley's passion, it hasn't been his only career choice. One of the things our viewers might not know about you is that you were working on Bay Street and these <laughs> investment banking and brokerage firms, you know, signing multi-billion dollar deals uh, during the day. And, and then, rocking at night. Yeah, rocking yeah, yeah. at night. Like, <laughs> you obviously didn't sleep much. But, but what triggered your departure from uh, the business industry? You know, it's actually funny because so many people, yeah, this, they see that and they go, well, how did you go from finance to music? And if, uh, if you've known me long enough, it's actually funnier to think, well, how did I end up in finance in the first place? Oh. Because uh, I was 13 years old when I started writing music and playing in bands. Uh, by the time I was in high school, I was playing in the bands, or not, sorry, not the bands, the, the venues downtown. Uh, the venues that, of course, I couldn't get in through the front door because I was too young, but I could get in through the back door and be on stage entertaining all the patrons. And uh, then, you know, I had this strange departure in finance. I actually thought it would be kind of neat to see what would someone with sort of an arts background do in a business world. I thought, and what's the most businessy thing I could think of? Investment banking, <laughs> right? You know, shirts, ties, the whole deal. But Coley didn't stay away from the lure of music for too long. It was actually the day that I wrote my last uh, exam for the, my CFA charter. Uh, I wrote the exam, and the next day I opened Fat Labs. I said, oh, now I want to do what I wanted to do. And his Fat Lab studio is a creative place to mix, record, and master songs. And let's not leave without finding out what's behind the name Fat Labs. Well, the name comes from the idea of uh, I, want, I, want, I want the studio to be a very comfortable and creative place for artists. I, I think that's the best way to get the, the music uh, out of them. And so the idea is that it's like a bit of a laboratory here. You shouldn't be afraid to experiment with the ideas, crossing the genres, for instance, as being one type of experiment. So that's where the lab comes from. And the fat is, it's actually kind of a slang term for musicians, not PH, but with an F, <laughs> right? Um, which, it just, musicians use that to describe sounds that are rich and full. So I thought, you know, good sounds, creative place, fat labs. Put them together. Exactly. Oh, wow. Mika Singh's album is set for release in the next couple of weeks. And if you are an aspiring singer, or perhaps if you've ever wanted to be a rock star, then check out fatlabs.com. For Bollywood Boulevard, I'm Veronica Chael.